So a preparation for exam, pre-calculus basics. The very first question says, the set of integers contains the set of, well, is a real number, is a whole number set, rational numbers, irrational numbers. Before integers, you have whole numbers and also natural numbers. So think about it this way. When you are introducing sets, the very first set you introduce is n or natural numbers. Or another name for this is counting numbers. Counting numbers. How do we represent this guy? N is represented by the set of. So we use a curly brackets starting at one, then two, then three, then four, five, and so on. Then we define whole numbers, W. You say that, hey, the first set doesn't have any zero in it. You're going to add zero and define a new set. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and the rest of them, whole numbers. Then you say that, hey, I don't see any signs here. Where is negative one? Where is negative two? Where is negative three? Let us introduce that. Let's expand this into Z or integers. So you have some negative numbers, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and so on. Integers. So as you can see, N is included in integers. This set is bigger than N. W also included in integers. So N and W are both subsets or sub collection of Z. So if you think about Z as the set of integers, N is part of Z and also you have whole numbers which has zero in it. So both of these two sets are subsets of Z. How do we represent this? We say that hey, N is a subset of Z, subset. You read this symbol as the subset or sub -collection. Also W is part of Z, W or the whole numbers is also a subset of you can say that, well, with that logic, N is a subset of whole numbers as well. Of course, great conclusion. N is a subset of whole numbers as well. So what's the correct answer? The correct answer is the set of integers contains whole numbers. Question two, the union of the set of rational numbers and the set of irrational numbers. So when you're talking about rationals, you're talking about fractions. Like what? Like a half, negative two thirds, and so on. When you're talking about irrationals, Irrationals include all radicals that cannot be simplified. Numbers like pi with a lot of decimals. So like square root of two, like pi, like Napier number that we're going to see later. These are examples of irrationals. When you're taking the union of rationals and irrationals, we define a new set that we call the real number set. So if you have rationals, which we denote by Q and irrationals, which we denote by Q, C, Q, 
cube component taking the union of Q and QC gives us a new set, which we call real number set or real numbers. Starting from negative infinity, going to positive infinity. Negative infinity to positive infinity. You might say that, hey, it's just our X axis. That's correct. X axis represents real numbers or Q union Q C. So this symbol is the union between two sets. Union. The first letter of union, U represents the union between two sets. So taking rationals and irrationals give us a new set that we call real number. There you go. Let's move a little bit faster. H is the set of all X values such that X is an integer and multiple of three. What are the multiples of three? Multiples of three, three, six, nine. What else? Yeah. Zero, what else? Minus three, minus six, minus all negative numbers are also included. Very good. So the answer is going to be A, all multiples. Very good. All odd natural numbers less than seven. So first of all, being odd, it means that we have one, three, five, seven, and so on. Natural numbers, counting numbers, starting from one. Less than seven, so it is going to be one, three, Five, and we're going to stop because it just says x is less than seven. Very good. So we have the set one, three, and five. Next question. Consider the following set. We have a combination of negative numbers, decimals, fractions, zero, radicals that we cannot simplify and also a negative fraction. List the elements of the set that are irrationals. Remember that we talked about irrationals like square root of two, pi, e, the radicals that you cannot simplify. So in this case, the only radicals that we cannot simplify are square root of five and negative square root of seven. List the elements of the set that are integers. Integers, z, again, it has some negative numbers and we put dots because we cannot count all of those negative numbers and negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and the rest of them. So integers, one of them is negative 92. This is not an integer. This is a fraction zero and that's it. So negative 92 and zero integers. Question seven. Question seven says, find the union between two sets. Again, when you're taking the union between two sets, you are listing all elements without repetition. The set of all members with no repetition. So one must be there. Two must be there, zero must be there, three must be there, four must be there, five must be there, no repetition. We only use one representative for each number. So the only answer is B. It says the intersection. And we are talking about the operation between sets. One of them is intersection. All common elements, repeated elements, intersecting elements. So the set of all, common members. What members are common between these two sets? Is one common? Yes. What about three? Of course. I have five in A, but not in B. So it's not a common member. 
What about zero? Zero is in B, not in A. It's not repeated. I don't see it twice. So the only elements are one and three. So it's going to be D. So for question nine, question nine says, here we have this number line. This number line with some dots. Guys, they are not connected together. Not connected. There are gaps in between them. How many points do I have? One, two, three, four, and five. Just five dots, five numbers. So first of all, when you have five dots, it means that it cannot be R. You don't have X axis. You don't have Y axis. It cannot be R. R has no gap, okay? It's either N or W. Since it's zero is included, we can quickly say it cannot be N because N starts at one, not zero. So quickly cross off N. Very well. So let us take a look at this guy. It says, hey, all X values that are less than X is less than four, less than four and belong to the whole number system. Zero, one, two, and three. It doesn't include four because it's just less than. It's not less than or equal to. It just says less than. So this set, is not the set that I'm looking for. Very good. So I'm going to cross this guy. The only answer is this. We can analyze this as well. So X belongs to W and X is less than 17 over four. So 17 over four is four point something, less than four point something. It includes four, then three, then two, then one, and we start stop at zero because it belongs to the whole number system. So the only answer is zero. Oh, wow. So number 10. Where are you number 10? Just right here. Good. Well, let's take a look at this guy. Guys, this graph is continuous. Compare this with the previous graph. Previous graph, they had some gaps. So we needed to work with N or W or Z. This guy says, hey, I'm just a continuous line and I'm covering every number in between negative two and two. Numbers between negative two and two are taken also negative two is included two is not because we put a hole on two so it cannot be the integers also integers denoted by i it cannot be the integers because for integers you must see some dots some gaps between the numbers so it's either c or d Let's check to see what is this. It says, hey, X is bounded between negative two and two. Two is included. This guy say, hey, two is included. But two is not included here. As you can see, we put a hole. So this guy cannot be the answer. The only answer is D. List from smallest to largest. We have two. We have absolute value of negative three, which we all know it's three. Here you have a negative times absolute value of negative two. This guy is just two, so you get minus two. So what do you have? You have negative two, two, and three. Okay. Very good. So number 11, the answer is A. Number 12, the same process. Here you have negative absolute value of negative one. 
This guy is just positive one. It has a negative in front of it. So you get negative one. This is absolute value of minus one, which is just one, and you have negative two. So you have negative two, then you have negative absolute value of negative one, and then you have one itself. So this should be the correct answer. Number 13 says, name the property here we distribute two into parentheses. So of course we have a distributive law. What about 14? 14 says, hey, you multiply negative two by one, which is the same as multiplication between one and negative two, and it's equal to negative two itself. It means that whatever you do by multiplying by one, it gives you the number back. It's like this, a times one is equal to one times a, which is always a. It means that one is an identity here for us. Evaluate, very good. First of all, remember that if you have A over B divided by C over D, this becomes multiplication by flipping the second fraction. You have A over B times D over C. So let us take a look at this guy. Here you have absolute value of negative three, which is equal to three itself. So you have minus six over 25 times three flipped a third. Before multiplying three and 25, simplify. You have six on the numerator. You have minus two times three, divided by 25 times one over three. You can cancel out three and three, why not? Simplify the whole thing, do not multiply. Try to get rid of common factors. What's left? Negative two divided by 25. Question 16. Question 16 says, hey, you have parentheses. So first we have to deal with parentheses. In the first parentheses, we have absolute value of minus seven, which is seven, then plus, plus, four, four, close the parenthesis, minus, minus eight, eight, open parenthesis, three times absolute value of negative six, which is just six. First, deal with the parentheses, guys. The first parenthesis gives you 11, minus eight times parentheses, 18. Very well, you get 11 minus 144 or negative 133. Okay. Take a look at this guy. Again, here we have parentheses, we have to deal with each of these one by one, negative eight to the second is negative eight times negative eight. It gives you, so let's write this guy down, negative eight times negative eight minus negative seven times negative seven minus, let's put this as a negative three times negative three times negative three. That's the meaning of this. You have the multiplication, then you have these exponents. Remember that if you have a to power three, it is a times a times a. If you have a to the power of four, it is a times a times a times a. This exponent shows repetition in multiplication. So here you have 64 negative times negative positive minus 49. And here you have one, two, three, four negative signs, which is plus plus. 27. Well, if you add these together, do the subtraction since you have negative and positive minus and plus subtraction addition, you can start from left and go to the right or from right to the left. It doesn't matter. So your final answer becomes 42. And finally, number 18. Number 18, here you have four times negative three times negative three 
minus square root of 36 divided by square root of 64 minus parentheses 5 times 5 minus 23. So we have to deal with multiplication first. We cannot just cross off things here. It's wrong. So on the numerator, we get 4 times 9 minus square root of 36, which is 6, divided by square root of 64, which is 8, minus 25, minus 23. Deal with the parentheses first. So 36 minus 6 divided by 8 minus 2. We get 30 divided by 6, which is just 5 